Okay, uh, good afternoon, everybody. This is the Option Professor, and it is the final session for today. I'm sure you guys are all uh, information weary, so uh, I'm a little information weary myself. So let's get to uh, what we can do for you here and go through some of these markets, and I'll give you my views and my observations. Uh, a little background on myself. I've been doing this for 40 years, and uh, I'm very familiar with all the different markets from the stocks to the energy to the gold to the crypto to the currency to China you name it I am pretty familiar with it uh, so I'm going to give you a wide variety of information today some of which may be very pertinent to some of you and some may not be but maybe it's good information for you to be aware of I hope um, again I'm giving out no advice here today because obviously I don't know anybody's circumstances so I'm certainly not going to advise people who I don't know uh, with regards to, I will provide my opinion and my view on what I think is happening on each and every market I talk about. Now, there are a number of markets that um, I have, uh, inf I have uh, interest in, and I'll go over my feelings on those. Some other markets that I've heard uh, people speak about lately, and I'll go into those. And then if you guys have any others, uh, we have a chat room here, and you can just throw your stocks up there, and I'd be more than happy to go over the stuff you're worried about. Okay, so uh, anyway, uh, right now on the screen, you've got uh, the S&P, and it's uh, on the future here, the June, is about uh, 4131, up about 13 here. And uh, basically, if you're looking at, uh, I look at the market on different time zones. Uh, one is a 20-year, five-year, one-year, one-month, and that's about as low as I go. If you're dealing in one day or five day, of course, you'd use those uh, time frames. Anyway, I always like to look at the long-term stuff because it keeps it in perspective where you are in relationship to the long run. Uh, for instance, uh, right now we're looking at a 20-year graph. And you can see uh, the averages that I work with uh, have been pretty steadily going up since 2011. So it's been a very long bull market. And actually, it really started going up in 09 and 10. The red line just keeps going and going and going. Now, even when we got the big collapse in COVID, my longer term average that I use hit, hit that number perfectly. So when people say there's going to be a big drop later in the year and that earnings are going to dry up and that we're going to have a recession, if all that is true, I would anticipate it going down towards the purple line, which is around 3000 now. But if it only happens late in the summer or in the fall, it might be 3200 by then, because obviously it's a moving average that will rise the longer you're above it. Right, right. Okay, so there you go. That uh, gives you an idea, you know, what kind of downside there could be if the dam breaks. Now, the dam's not breaking right now. And one of the simple reasons is, is you see my cursor at the bottom there? That's October. I told everybody who reads my stuff that between October of last year, of the second year of the presidency, to the um, April timeframe, where we are now, is historically been a very, very strong period for stocks. And obviously, that was very, very good input by me, because look what happened since October. So again, the cycle won again. That's a presidential cycle, third, uh, second year, October, through third year, April. Of course, we are running out of time here, because we're already uh, through the first week of April. And uh, time flies, as we all know. So uh, the bottom line is, is right now, as far as I'm concerned, my opinion is 4205, where the green line is, is very important. It coincides to pretty much the high point that we had when, back in February. So you got the high point 4208. Now you got the moving average about the same. So obviously that's going to be resistance in my view. Now, if we were to break through that, where would we possibly go? And here's how I'm coming up with that. You take 4810, ballpark figure, rough math. What did, what did uh, Bush used to say? Fuzzy math? Now let's call it rough math. 4810, then you go to the bottom there, 30, uh, about 3,500. Differential is about 1,310. You take 61.8%. You get yourself about 810 points. You take 3,500. You slap on 800 and uh, 108 points. Excuse me, let's try that again. 4810 minus 3,500 gives you that. 61.8 gives you about 810. So if I take 810 and add it to 3,500, it gives me a number. The number is 4,310. That would be my neighborhood on where it might go if it busts through this resistance. Why would it bust through this resistance? In my view, the number one reason is positioning. What does that mean? That means Tom, Dick, and Harry and all their uncles and nephews are bearish, right? And so that creates quite a bit of a, um, of a situation where many people are out or they're lightly in. 
A lot of people have gone into money market, record numbers of money going into money market. So that's called positioning and that's called negative sentiment. And sometimes negative sentiment can get you a nice rally from short covering and the FOMO, fear of missing out. Now, we do have a, a labor report tomorrow. It's obviously a big deal. Uh, the uh, economic numbers seem to be weakening. Obviously, the manufacturing numbers are weakening for five months. But why wouldn't manufacturing be weakening when you've got what? These people overordered, right? During the pandemic, they overordered. They have tremendous inventories. What are you going to manufacture more when they're already loaded with inventory? So that's no surprise there that you're going to have a manufacturing dip, okay? Because they overdid it with the ordering. Now, the surprise today was obviously the services number because it's just barely above 50. And if that goes into the red, that would be pretty negative. Now, I live in a, uh, shall we say, a leisure and, uh, and travel uh, mecca here in Las Vegas. And um, I still see quite a bit of activity here. I, I was actually surprised to see services index being down a little bit uh, towards 51 because I didn't see any of that. And you people who live in Phoenix or other areas where people go out to eat all the time, you know, you're noticing that the, the restaurants are still packed. So I don't know if this was a one, uh, one month blip down because it does seem volatile up and down every other month. But uh, if it does go into the red under 50, you know, that would obviously be more confirmation. Also, We've got a yield curve on the three month to the 10 year that is uh, the biggest spread uh, in 40 years. So that's kind of a, re a recessionary thing too. Also, we had claims today, which are about 10% higher than people thought it was gonna be. Historically, that has been a precedent before um, a recession type thing. My feeling is, is that with the sentiment and the money market crowd going so nuts, that maybe they will delay this downturn to Q3 and Q4. And that might be more of a uh, probability here, meaning let's run it up through 4205, we'll run it up to 4350 or whatever the number is, get everybody in, then get some reality out there. And then basically you could uh, see the thing roll over from a higher level. That's, I think, your best case scenario. These people that are talking about 4,800 and 5,000, you know, I think they're, they're sobriety tests that should be given to those people because I just don't see that as far as uh, uh, the way things are going. But, you know, anything can happen. You know, after 40 years in the market, I've been in this thing, I've seen a lot of things happen. So I'm not etched in concrete. I have parameters. If the parameters change, I change as well. Now, when would I be very nervous if I was an owner of stock? I'd be nervous if we start breaking underneath 3960 and 3940 and 3980, because that would be taking out these uh, this little traffic jam here. So you have a little traffic jam around 3980 here. And if it takes that out and they can get that RSI, which is at 53 right now, under 50, and if they ever take out 3800, then that scenario that I'm painting for later in the year going down towards the purple line, I think would be coming true. Okay, right now there's no evidence of that. So obviously you wouldn't bet that way. Um, okay, so that gives you a little bit of an idea on uh, my feeling on the uh, stock market. If you go to the five year, you'll notice that 3940, 3960 areas where you got all the congestion here, right? Look at all those numbers, 3960, 3960, 3990. So you start breaking under four grand uh, with any kind of power, you know, that will be a negative, but that's not happening right now. That's an if. Uh, 4042 is your first uh, signal here on the red line and your RSI is right around 55. Now I'll tell you something right now. There's a lot of RSIs in the mid fifties. If you can get RSI through 60 and going towards 70, you can get a very big spike up. You could, okay. We'll have to see what happens. But uh, right now, obviously, uh, there's your lines in the sand, and uh, that's where you're looking. On the one month, no, one year, I'm sorry, you do have a high surrounded by lower highs. So that's a indication of a possible turn. So obviously, the first thing, if I really wanted to get real bullish, I'd love to see it take out the high of 4171. Because that would invalidate the formation of what? A high surrounded by lower highs, which is sometimes an exhaustion. You see down here? A low surrounded by higher lows, exhaustion. You see up here, a high surrounded by lower highs, big drop. So, you know, the, the, the stage is set for a decline once you get a high surrounded by lower highs. So if you really want to be bullish and you really want to think about 4,200, 4,350, well, you know, 
it might be easier to buy it on a break above 4171 when you have momentum and a crowd behind you than buying it here hoping it does go up again if you get a bad number uh, on uh, the unemployment and say the unemployment rate draw uh, uh, jump to like four something or other, something big and then the uh, the treasury note dropped towards uh, 275 or something you know, I don't know. Maybe you would get uh, maybe you would get the stocks to run uh, simply because the valuations as these rates drop are easier to live with. See, the valuations during this jump up, particularly in Nasdaq, have gotten rich again, and because they've gotten rich again, they're vulnerable because if earnings don't come in and you've got rich uh, valuations and your cycle ended, which ends in April here, uh, then you've got vulnerability in May and June. You know, so. Again, getting above 41.71 for me would be very important. I'd be much more comfortable buying this thing on a break above there than I would hoping it goes up. Uh, turning towards the one month, which is the minimum uh, you look at, you can see it tried to break here at 41.60. Now it's back on the bicycle to the upside, but it's kind of uh, right around the critical blue line there. So again, you know, if this thing starts breaking above 41.40, that would start looking good. Break above 41.71, it's on its way. Uh, with regards to uh, QQQ, this is your NASDAQ stocks, right? Getting above 312 was very important for me as far as uh, sticking with the bull side. So you can see right now uh, you got above the red line there, which was at uh, 295. So once you got above 295, uh, 290, you were in business. Then getting above this blue line is very important. And that came in at 312. Oh, I'll make that, uh, hold on. Yeah, 316. Uh, okay, so getting above 312 is uh, 316, but now you still got the green line there. So again, just like 4205, uh, look towards, uh, look towards uh, 330 <laughs> as an important zone. Um, Looking at the other uh, months. Okay, let's see if you got a divergence here. No, no divergence. Okay, so anyway, uh, the NSX had a big run here. Again, uh, it did fill this gap right here. So again, getting above 330, very important right now for the NASDAQ as far as resistance and staying above 300. Okay, and let's look at the uh, IWM. IWM still on the defensive. See all those lines are still above it? Now you got a low surrounded by higher lows. That's a good thing. Okay, on a 20 year basis, let's see what it looks like. Yeah, if you can get above 180, that'd be a nice thing. Get above 180, be a nice thing. Short term, is it going up? No, nah, it looks a little sh uh, shaky. Again, you know, you're going into a report that's going to probably have a big effect. But, the, you know, the small caps uh, are having a little bit of a tough time because we're they're trying to figure out if we're going into a recession or not. They're trying to figure out exactly uh, if these rates are down temporarily or not. Uh, let's talk about interest rates because it's something I've been very, uh, very good with. So I'll show you why I was very good with it, and I'll show you. Okay, on the uh, on the Treasury uh, situation, if you look at the one year, look, this is called reversion to the mean, possibly. Do you understand? So this line, the red line, is still moving higher. That's a good thing if you want to see rates go back up. You'd love to see the red line pointing down if in fact it's going to really have a big correction. Now, if it has a big drop towards these other lines of 250 yields, you know that's because something very bad has occurred, okay? So the bottom line is if you see, and we did tell you that this 340 number, can you see how it's holding there? That's a big number. So because there is an air pocket, that's what I call an air pocket between here and here. So if yields were to really hit this air pocket and tank, 
It would be because that unemployment rate probably spiked up. It would mean that the services index is going to go into the red. And it would probably mean that revenues and earnings are going to be in danger. So I would be very careful of this. And of course, I am very careful about it. But I would suggest uh, you be the same. Um, but again, the trend on interest rates is still for higher rates. So let's make that clear. This is called a reversion back towards the mean. It already made a reversion to the one year or the 12, the 12 SMA. Here again, like I say, it's got where, remember I said 250, 260, that's, that's the air pocket. If this thing really went into the tank and if we get in and it, you know, it's obviously pointing down and your RSI is uh, right there at 40. If RSI on this breaks under 40, that's when you get accelerations. So we're at a very critical point on this 10 year. You don't want this, well, if you, if you want rates lower, because you're not uh, saving, you're a low, you're a borrower, then obviously, or you're buying high valuation stocks that can't handle higher rates, then obviously this could be very good for you if you get this air pocket filled. And on the one year, there's no divergence here, so that's not helping you. You see, you got 38 here, lower low and 36. So that's not a divergence. If this were to say something like uh, uh, 42, then that would be telling us that this is exhaustion. That's not exactly what it's saying right now. Okay. So anyway, that's the story on uh, uh, treasuries. Okay. Yeah. If this thing gets back above, I'll tell you that. If it gets back above the 340 area, actually, I'll give you the exact number. 360 is really the key number. You see that uh, stuff right there, 360? So if it can get back above 360 for whatever reason, then it gets back on the bicycle. Actually, in the short run, the first number you wanted to get above is 350 ballpark, 345, 350. So if this report comes out positive for bonds and it jumps above 340, 350, and then 360, you are back on the bicycle for higher interest rates. The Fed is not talking about cutting rates. The Fed is not talking about uh, rates uh, not going up anymore. They're saying it's going to go up a little bit more and then they're going to hold it. Now, you know, historically, there seems to be a relationship that um, uh, the Fed funds uh, is above the CPI when it's over. And the Fed funds is at six, uh, four and three quarters, and the last print on CPI is six. Well, even if it goes down to five and a half or five, you're still going to be above that. So bottom line is we'll have to see what happens. Um, everyone's still out there working. Uh, you know, the employment thing they're all uh, excited about. The JOLTS report was lighter, but it's still 1.7 jobs for every one person. Uh, the, uh, the claims were a little bit higher, but they're not off the chart. And, um, you know, the jobs report tomorrow is going to give us a lot of information that uh, will be helpful. But, uh, you know, the, the job market is still tight. Four million people quit their jobs in that report that was supposed to be so, uh, uh, so uh, uh, positive. Uh, you know, four million people quit their jobs, which means four million people think they can get another one pretty fast. Okay. Uh, so anyway, that's your interest rate picture, because that's, that's a big thing of what's going on. And again, if we get back above 340, 360, uh, you're back on the bicycle. So, uh, and again, if, if you start breaking it much further, there's a little gap there. You see that gap? It might go into that gap and then reverse. So keep an eye on that number. That number comes in at the high point there was 310, and the low point there was 317. So watch that. Maybe you get a report. Maybe it goes into 310, 317, and then it goes back up, because that might be a gap they're trying to fill. Keep an eye on that. That's interesting. Yield 310, 317. That could be the floor of the drop, because after they get this thing to go down, if they do, that could be the kind of thing where they suck people into, uh, into that side of the market, only to reverse it. So keep an eye on that number. I'm glad I showed that to you. It could be important. Let's talk about the US dollar. This is something we were very good on as well. And I'll tell you why. Oh, not Dixie. I don't want Dixie Corporation. Okay, on the US dollar, we got very bullish on this thing. And then we said it was going to drop. Uh, Why did we get bullish? Because we can read the chart here. And once it got above 90.92, that's called an uptrend. And when it gets up to 115 and the what? The moving averages are at 105 and a 100. 
It's not if it's going to come down, it's going to revert to the mean. They all do at some point. So the bottom line is, is obviously that far away, you don't want any part of the long side anymore because it's just too extended. Now, where would it come back down to? Reversion to the mean, just like 10 year. 10 year came back to the red line. Maybe the 10 year will try to go down to the green line, but maybe not. But anyway, this is holding the green lines and you've got a low point with higher lows. You also have a pretty good number on Fibonacci. Rough math. You take the 90 low, you subtract the 115 high, you get 25 points. 61.8 gives you 15. You take 15 and a half, it's actually, well, 15, let's call it, uh, and you get around 100. Well, you know, it's not an exact science. The low on this thing was 182. So you had a pretty much of a Fibonacci pullback. So again, then the Fibonacci number comes in right where the green line is. So that's why the green line is very important right now. And Tom, Dick, and Harry are all pretty bearish on the dollar. Now, there is some reason to be bearish on the dollar because our yields are dropping, which means our yield advantages is going out of the window, okay? So bottom line is what? You're looking at a situation where the wages in England are going up way faster than ours, and so is their inflation rate. And the last time that happened, British interest rates got higher than the Fed's. If, our, if their interest rates get higher than ours, the British pound, which has already had a nice rally, uh, which is again, when the market's up here on the, uh, on the, uh, on the euro, uh, excuse me, on the, uh, on the uh, dollar index, you want to be buying the euro. You want to be buying the British pound because those are weighted into the uh, dollar index. Okay. So, but now everyone's bearish on the dollar and it has had that correction. So again, that 100 number is pretty key. We'll have to see how that goes. If we do lose our yield advantage even further because of the unemployment report, you know, that could hurt the dollar. There's a lot of people keep thinking that the euro is going to go 110, 115, even 120 this year. So you got to respect that. If that's going to happen, then the dollar index is probably going to come down and test the blue or test the, uh, test the purple. And that's possible. So if you take out the low here of 182, it's on its way to those numbers. So you don't fight the tape. But you don't want to be caught doing things at a turning point the other way either. So you got to be careful right here. Okay, so there's your dollar index. Uh, the whole country is jumping into crude because OPEC cut production. Well, I thought crude was a very good bargain. And I told everybody in the newsletter and the updates uh, at 64 and 66. And I'll show you why. But I don't think it's as good of a deal. And I made that kind of a point too. So let's show you what's going on with crude, which has an effect on these oil shares. Uh, crude, uh, obviously another example, when you get this far away from the moving averages, it's not if it's coming back towards them, it's when. Now you are coming down here, you see this at the 65 area right here? And that is a very big number. It also coincides with a high point over here and some low points over here. So you're in a very big area. So my feeling was, if it's not gonna hold here, it's gonna go into the abyss. And obviously when OPEC met, they saw the same thing. So they don't want it to go in the abyss. So they cut production to get this thing to go back up. Problem is if we have a recession ahead of us and China's demand isn't gonna be what it's supposed to be because they had a Chinese new year, which is no longer happening, uh, you know, celebration. And so the demand that they got out of that may not be constant. And so basically you're looking at what? A situation where there's resistance. And I got resistance on the green line there, which has been very good at holding pretty much. Uh, and that comes in at 84 bucks. And then the uh, red line used to be up at 90. So it's trending down the red line and it comes in at 87 and change. So, you know, you got to get above 87 and change and get this red line pointing up because you're not going to see big moves like this unless the red line is pointing up, which is the 12 SMA. Okay, so I'd be careful of it. You, uh, you made a nice little pop in the last few weeks. Why not grab a little bit of money? See what happens. Sell some calls, maybe. Whatever. You know, do something uh, in case it doesn't go through. Uh, give this thing uh, just a little bit of time. Let's see if there's anything else telling us that it could be rolling over. See, again, it's running into the blue line here. Blue line comes in where? 81. Okay, 81.27. Okay. Uh, Let's uh, take a look at the one year. Big gap there, big gap. 
So maybe it's not, maybe that's going to be like an island and it comes back down, or maybe it's going to be a runaway followed by, uh, or a breakaway followed by runaway and exhaustion. Uh, look at the one month. Okay, it's on a little bit of a ledge here. Starts trading in the, well, there's a big gap there. So we'll have to see over the weekend. See if they, uh, if, the, if something comes out to sober these guys up a little bit, um, and they may want to fill that gap. That gap's a good four bucks lower. So that's why, like I say, when I was talking about being very constructive on it at 64 and 65, that's not the same as now. So that's why you have to adjust your opinion as the prices change. Um, let's see here. So anyway, that's the story on the crude. Uh, some people are also looking at gasoline going into the summertime. Let's see if there's any merit to that. Okay, on a 20-year basis, yeah, I was very positive. You see, uh, when I put the letter out and I say $2 on unleaded gas is a very, very important low, that's why it's an important low. So, you know, once it hit there, just like I was talking about uh, crude, when it, when it hit there, it was time to take a shot. So now you take a shot down here and it's running into resistance, right? So you got to be careful down here. Red line's pointing down, hitting the number. We'll have to see how it goes. Starts breaking through here, though. It looks great. RSI is starting to look like it wants to go. And uh, I believe this is about a Fibonacci drop from that low to that high, right? Just to do the math again. And you'll see 40 cents was the low. And then you've got $4.40 being the high. Rough math. Four bucks, 61.8% is uh, two and a half or 247. So you take 440 minus uh, two, 245 and you get about 195. And look, the low was right around 200. So that's pretty close, pretty close. And it certainly bounced off of there with some vengeance, right? Now we're going to see if this is what they call a dead cat bounce, and then it's going to come right back down again. That wouldn't be so good. It is good that the blue and the other uh, purple lines are rising as well as the green. So all of that is good stuff. So we start breaking above this number here. Uh, I would be uh, saying that the train might be leaving the station and that number here, sustaining it above uh, 279, 280. So let's keep this thing above 280 if you want to be bullish. Huh? 279, keep it up above there if you want to be bullish. Uh, and then if you do, you know, there is some, there's some uh, real estate above, some real estate above. So keep an eye on that and see what you think. Uh, let's turn uh, towards, uh, everyone's into crude. Uh, let's turn to uh, Asia. We'll start with China. You know, China's economy is growing because they didn't uh, print all the money that we did uh, during the COVID. They didn't, uh, you know, so they've got uh, money to burn that they didn't spend during the COVID crisis. I guess they just locked everybody in their apartment, cheaper. Anyway, uh, they uh, are definitely trying to get domestic demand going. So we've been in things like Las Vegas Sands, Melco, you know, things that have to do with travel and leisure and spending money domestically in China. And they've been working very well. Uh, with regards to the uh, large cap here, let's take a look at what you got. We go to the five year because I think there's not that much history. Well, you got a nice one, two, three formation setting up. Your one went up to the 34 number, your two came back down to 27. And now if you can get above 30 and 34, you could get above the purple line, which is very ominous. You know? So that's, uh, that, that is a sobering thing to see if you're bullish, a big purple line, 120 uh, uh, moving average uh, as a cloud above you. But uh, if he does get through the, uh, if you just get through the 30 and the 34 number and there's a reason for it and this RSI starts giving you a little bit more of a power up move, I'd be more, I'd be more constructive. And again, obviously you don't want it breaking under this low right here and this low here comes in at uh, 27 bucks. Okay, the sister to this one that I always use is KWeb. So this is the way uh, the China thing goes. KWeb is all your internet stuff and uh, Okay, so on KWeb is the same story. You know, it's held this uh, pullback and now it's got some resistance right here and it's got the cloud above. So get it above 35, that would be nice to see. Get it above 40 and you might be able to run this thing. Um, but again, the RSI looks like, uh, you know, if it starts tanking next week for whatever reason, this RSI goes negative, 
It very well could be that everyone overestimated the recovery in China, and China's not in as good a shape as people think. And the domestic demand that this guy wants might be hard to come by because everyone is still buried in real estate over there. And there's a lot of unemployment between the ages of 18 and 25. So there's issues over there. And uh, they are trying to create their own currency, which I'll show you in a minute. Uh, what I mean, create their own uh, uh, backed currency, which uh, I'll get to in a second here. Uh, let's turn to the gold. All right, April gold will put up. Now, again, I was very bullish on it at 1800. You'll see why. And I am cautious, as I said in my last report, anywhere between 2050 and 2100. And here's why. 1800, I got all kinds of support. So you take your shot, right? You take your shot. Now that your shot is winning, right? Your shot is winning. Now, I'm going to tell you something about RSI. RSI is right in the low 60s right now. It is an area where you could go parabolic because if this RSI starts going 63, 65, 67, 68, we are going to blow off the top and we're going to probably blow it off with a lot of power. Okay. However, this is the neighborhood where if it's going to fail, this is the low 60s or about 60. And that's sometimes where it does get hit. So as you can see, we did go up to 2033, didn't make the 2050, 2100 area that I talked about. But that's the area that I would be concerned about. If this thing is going to fail, that's the neighborhood it would probably fail. Okay. Your RSI is at 62 right now. Okay. Your RSI, when we hit this number here, was 60. So last time we had a high was around low 60s. Here we have a high of low 60s. So you have to be a little careful. Uh, on the five year graph, what's it look like? Let's see if you got a divergence, 58, and then you got 69. No divergence here. See that high point? That's a, a weekly high. So if next week we don't take out the 2033, then that could be a, just that, that could be called a turning point, possibly a high surrounded by lower highs. Okay, and so uh, again, though, still very strong, but getting extended, you know, your moving averages are down at 1800 and 1850, and we're trading above 2000. Uh, one year, and you got 72 here, and here you've got, well, here you got a divergence, and that would be telling me that it's possible that it will give up the boat. You see this high there, the uh, RSI is at 73. You see this high we just got, the RSI is at 67. Not a big divergence. That's not a huge one, but it is somewhat. And of course, that uh, 60 something is, uh, is 64 now. So again, break under 1980, obviously that wouldn't be very good. And then of course, uh, and then of course you've got a vacuum down into lower numbers. Uh, looking at the one month graph, Uh, one month is rolling over a little bit. Uh, as long as it stays under 2020, that uh, red line will continue to go down. Now, clearly getting under 1980, which is another number from another chart, is a key number. You want to stay above 1980. You start breaking underneath that, that's not good. Actually, your first uh, hint will be if it takes that low out, and that low comes in around 2005. So keep an eye on it. You know, it's had a big run. It's in the newspaper. Uh, central banks are buying it and this and that. Well, some people were saying central banks are buying it as a hedge against their stupidity of printing so much money. China is buying it for a very simple reason. And they're mining it, mining it and buying it. They're loading up on it. You know why? Because they're trying to have all the energy people who are, shall we say, dodgy, like Iran, uh, United Arab Emirates, Belharan, uh, Kuwait, you know, all, the guy, all the usual suspects, they want them to settle these oil uh, transactions in the Shanghai Hancock exchanges, and they want to do it in Wan. Now, those guys I just mentioned are not idiots, and they're not going to tie their wagon to a communist country with a currency that uh, is, you know, obviously uh, connected to a fairly large amount of national debt. So they are trying to give you a conversion feature where you can convert the yuan into gold. And in order to do that, they need to have the reserves in case people want to do that. 
So that's an interesting way that they're trying to uh, get going with the one. In fact, the largest uh, currency traded in Russia right now is the one. So uh, they started this exchange in 2018. And obviously the plan they had was what's going on now, which is to try to create a currency that everyone will accept. And uh, again, they're not going to accept it because Mr. Xi's a nice man. They're going to accept it because they can convert it into gold. Now, again, you know, gold uh, is a commodity and, uh, you know, converting it into gold may not be all it's cranked up to be in during certain times. So we'll have to see. Sounds like, uh, you know, an experiment and it's an experiment they hope will work. They're trying to separate themselves, obviously, these countries for being so dependent on the dollar. OK, so there's the gold. And that's the story there on, uh, on that, uh, you know, picking up all that gold by the central banks, particularly China. China's buying. China's buying. Well, they're buying because they got to have uh, reserves. They're going to let people convert your currency into gold. Right. Something we stopped doing in 73 or whatever. So uh, don't, uh, you know, don't think they're just buying it because they have a lot of gold earrings to buy, uh, to, you know, to buy for Christmas or something. Uh, May 23 on silver let's take a look silver had some resistance at 25 bucks and it's right up there see the resistance there 78 come back up here 60 now that's got a pretty good divergence here this is on the one month first rally up takes you to uh rsi of uh, 80 79 and now we're in the 60s that's a pretty big divergence so if it starts taking out this number here it might be sayonara which is uh 20 about 2497 it looks like yeah. Okay. Longer term, uh, the silver is trying to break out a little bit. So if you uh, want it to be bullish on it, you definitely don't want it underneath 2325. But again, the red line is always best to be above all the rest of them if you're going to get a major move. So keep an eye on it and, uh, and see what, uh, what goes on. There is some power to it. It did hold the purple line. These are all positives. And uh, some of the uh, mining shares that we follow very closely have been doing a great job, but we've been happy with those things for two years now. Again, all these markets have got stocks that we follow, which we can't get into in this short format. Um, there is some uh, energy stocks, though, that people were saying uh, they thought was uh, undervalued. Let's take a look at some of them and see if there's any uh, credence to that. So the first one... Uh, that they were looking at here was MPC. And then I'm gonna go over some stocks that uh, seem to be doing pretty well this night uh, that we have involvement in. Uh, okay, so this doesn't go back very far. And here it goes. All right, well, you got a nice uptrend here for quite a while. Uh, let's see if there's divergences to worry about. You have a high point there at 70. Yeah, I'd be nervous here because watch. You got a high point there uh, at 70 on the RSI. Now you've made another new high and it's at 56. That's a substantial divergence. So if this baby starts getting underneath what? 127? I'd be concerned about it. So forget that one for the time being. Unless you want to just uh, see if it's going to keep going. Uh, next one is uh, PSX. Phillips. Okay, on Phillips five years uh, chart, you're looking at it holding the bottom there. So that's where you buy. If you're following things and you're interested in Phillips Petroleum, you buy it against 90. And you definitely want it to stay above the blue line now, which is at uh, 98. So if you bought it at 90, you got to stop at 98, you know, hopefully it doesn't gap through you and you're in pretty good shape. Uh, staying above the red line there is very important. And that comes in at 101.94. So like I say, right now, uh, you'd like to see this thing maintain the, the number I just mentioned, those numbers. And uh, let's see, uh, that's, about, uh, that's about the size of Phillips. Uh, let's see the other ones here. PBF. Again, it's holding the blue line, so you'd like it to hold, if you could, uh, this blue line down here at uh, 3962. Let's call it around, uh, 
Yeah, let's call it around 40 bucks, right around there. Uh, let's see what you got here. A little bit of a divergence up here. But like I say, let's hold that number here because if they start breaking and it stays underneath the red number, the red number is very important. And the red number is at uh, 42.54. So it's trading underneath that now. So keep an eye on that. that you know, again, the whole energy sector, as I say, you know, if we don't get above 83, 84 and get above uh, 88, you know, uh, this rally, uh, you know, uh, it could be spotty. But uh, the, the, the flow is definitely still to the upside, even though we had a pullback today. Um, let's see. And they liked uh, Sinclair. Today was not a good day for energy, though, generally speaking. Now, it's, this is on the line. So this is the place where it better hold, right? Because if it doesn't hold here, it goes into the abyss. So if you had any interest in this one, uh, this might be the time to take a look at it. My only problem is the RSI looks like it's getting ready to go into the toilet. Um, and the RSI isn't diverting. Uh, it is actually confirming. So be careful of this one. But there's a at least you have a line in the sand of which to play against. So keep an eye on it if it starts doing it. Let's see if you if it looked good there, where would it have to go on the monthly to look good? Yeah, so you got to keep it above 46 bucks for a while to get the red line pointing up because that's not what it's doing right now. Okay. All right, enough with those uh, on, uh, quote unquote, uh, that's why you have to verify things. You see, I hear things, I go verify it. You, you people I work with uh, on the hour, uh, uh, session we have one on one, they'll tell me different stocks, then I have to verify it. Uh, one uh, new customer today uh, gave me one called no uh, Novavax. Okay, so you know, you guys have your own ideas. When we have our session, which I'll get to at the end of the broadcast here, you know, this is the kind of stuff we go over. And if you're holding a time bomb, you know, uh, basis the technicals, at least we have an idea. Uh, this one here, uh, he brought it to me a little late because on the uh, monthly graph. This thing gave a very nice buy signal down here in the area of about six bucks. And obviously it's been rallying ever since. So this is where you want to get onto that train. Uh, up here it's extended and it's more risky, right? So when it goes, to the, I did this with the DD. Uh, you know, if you buy something down here for six and it goes up to nine, you know, you can take uh, a whole bunch of shares off and reduce your risk or turn, uh, or turn if it's optionable, you could turn a, a position where you put six bucks in your pocket into a long-term option position. And therefore you don't have, uh, you know, you just use your profits or whatever, or whatever you want to use to uh, put a, a limited risk option. That's called a replacement trade. And the reason you wouldn't want to replace it is because it's had a big rally and whatever made it rally, if it starts fading off of that, this thing obviously has the power to come right back down again. So what people do on replacement trades is they get onto a horse that runs jump off the horse at some point and replace it with a limited risk call spread or a limited risk call to take advantage of any further upside. But now the risk is much less because you're only buying the premiums and also from the cash standpoint. And then if you buy time, you have more time on the clock in order to see it uh, keep going. So uh, these are some of the things we talk about in that one hour session as well, how to offset risk once you take risk. Uh, another thing I like to do when I'm uh, uh, buying calls is once the uh, higher strikes on the calls or lower strikes on the put uh, equal or exceed what I paid for my option, if I can sell those and get all my cash off the table and get a, uh, a look at a spread that even if it doesn't work, one will offset another, you know, that I love, you know, because reducing risk while you're investing, you know, sometimes makes a lot of sense. Okay, uh, I'm going to run through a few here that uh, I noticed that uh, when I went through my stuff, it looked like uh, things were going fairly well. Uh, again, I talked about Europe. These European banks, you know, are um, a lot, uh, lot better shaped than some of our regionals. And, uh, and also, like I say, uh, we've got a nice buy signal on this back at 17 and it's at 19. So when the red line starts pointing up, that's the time to get in uh, on the uh, on the five year. What is that car? I will go to the one year. 
and see what that's showing me. See, got back on the bicycle at 18 and it looks like it's trying to run up. You got gaps there though, you gotta be careful. And that blue line still pointing down. So you gotta be careful. Let's see if I got, uh, you know, have it on a five year basis. You see, it came right down to the blue line. So that's where you take your shot, 17 and you're at 19. That's why you look at things on different time frames. So you have a perspective rather than, uh, you know, uh, a one week chart every time you lose perspective. Um, okay, so there you go. And the other thing I told you about was uh, uh, British stocks, you know, the FTSE. And here is the FTSE, or here's this British stock, uh, a UK stock uh, thing. And we've liked this one for a while as well. You see the red line starts turning up. That's where you're supposed to be getting in. You got violated, but the red line never turned down. So it's back above the red line. It's back looking good. Gets back under 32, and that would be something to be concerned about takes out 30, that would be party over. Uh, Mexico is benefiting from um, the reshoring and close shoring. And you can see here that it's been a pretty good ride for Mexico. Uh, you started to get buy signals back here at 28. You got more buy signals here at 46. Got violated, but it keeps going. Violated, but it keeps going. Right now, you want this thing to stay above 57 and a half. Now, divergence, let's see. You had high points here, and the RSIs are at 66. You got a high point here, RSI is 58. So you do have a divergence, which puts it into play. So if this can't take out here, and this is an exhaustion, then it could have a more substantial uh, decline. You know, if we go into a recession, uh, all boats get hit. So, you know, it's uh, you're not going to find a lot of uh, needles in a haystack if the economies around the world have, uh, happen to go into a recession. Uh, let's look at a few other ones there. That was the internationals that look pretty good. And then, you know, uh, you've got social media uh, probably waiting for TikTok to get banned. So uh, we thought this was a good situation and it still looks pretty OK. Um, and you got some pretty good people who were involved in it. So again, once it got above uh, 20, it was time to take a shot at her here. And as long as we can stay above like 25, it looks like it, it has a lot of real estate above. Of course, it does have that purple line as well. So getting above the purple line there, which comes in at around 32 is a key if you're going to open the door to the higher levels. But uh, it does, you know, it does have a momentum-y looking thing right now. Snap is the other guy. They're supposed to be beneficiaries, I guess, if, um, if TikTok goes away. As you can see, this thing used to be whatever it was, and it's way down here. And so going up to 25 or so is not off the question if things really turn. And it's a heck of a, it's had a heck of a run here, uh, you know, stabilizing right now. You know, I'd love to see this thing above 12, get above 12, because, you know, you, if you get into this thing, you, you think it might go. And it can't go anywhere until it gets above 12. It's only a dollar and a half away. Sometimes it's better to buy higher on its way to higher than it is to buy here, which is cheaper than the guy who buys at 12 or 13. But the guy who buys at 12 and 13, he's got a crowd behind him. Right now you don't, and that's why you, you'd be sweating bullets. Uh, let's see anything else. We went over the China, the K-Web. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, the uh, uh, biotechs. Now, like I say, this thing looks pretty lousy because it's had a big drop from 92 down to 72, but it is getting above the red line, which is good. And let's just see if it is a 20 year graph on it. Not too really, how about a five year? Okay, so it's still got a lot of work to do. It does have a low surrounded by higher lows, but this could be for a trade, maybe. Again, everything is hanging on for dear life with this jobs report and how interest rates are going to go. Are we going to fill that air pocket underneath 330 or 310? What we figure, 310 or 317 where that gap is? That's your last line in the sand. So 310, 317, is it going to gap underneath that level into the twos on some kind of an event? Well, you know, then if we start hearing the recession is next week, then this thing or a lot of these things are going to get hit. But clearly, it's discounted off the 170 number, huh? Uh, but it had a good day today. That's why I brought it up. Uh, another thing that had a good day today was uh, 
uh, Deutsche Telekom. I guess you get a whole bunch of uh, T-Mobile because they're a big holder of T-Mobile when you buy this thing. So you get a European uh, telephone and you got T-Mobile. That's why people like it. That's why I liked it. So again, it's obviously extended. You know, it's not a great time to start buying as far as you know the technicals. So again, you probably would want to wait to see if there's going to be some kind of correction. And there's a gap there. So let's see how it goes. But it's certainly been a good thing to be involved in ever since it was 17 bucks. Macy's is another one people are touting. They're saying $29 I heard on TV. Let's see what they're saying on Macy's here. I, I, I was in and out of Macy's, uh, got out in the 20s there, yeah. And now, uh, you know, I'm not such a big fan because you see when, when, you, when you tend to make money, the red line's pointing up and, and things are going up. Right now, the red line is kind of uh, flatter a little bit, but the other lines are clearly pointing down. And these guys uh, had a target of 29. So in order to get to 29, you got to get above all these other numbers. So let's see how that happens because, uh, you know, Frankly, right now, if it can hold this uh, 18 number and take out 19 and a half, at least then you have a line in the sand to work with at 18. And clearly it had a big drop, you know, 18, uh, 25 to 17 is certainly a good size drop. So there's no doubt about that. Um, let's see here. And then the other stuff that uh, uh, there was a bid on today is a big, ta uh, big, uh, big cap tech uh, or Let's call it the QQQ big cap. So you had Google today. I'll give you a little insight into the Google. So yeah, obviously it turns up here on the thing. So you got a little positive there. Now it's hypering it to the upside. Um, 64. Yeah, and on a 20 year basis, this thing already had its correction. You know, it came down here. So getting back above, as I was telling people, if you can get that uh, Google above 108, that's not a bad thing. And it got above 108. So that uh, blue line could be telling us that it might gain its speed back again. On a five-year basis, again, you can see it's breaking above the resistance there and the red line's pointing straight up. So stay above 100 bucks, uh, Google. And uh, then you might have more to come. Uh, Amazon was another one. You know, people are trying to hide out in things like utilities, like these big caps tech, where they have uh, fortress balance sheets and they've got buybacks coming and all that kind of stuff. Uh, again, another one where the red line is uh, right here at one, uh, excuse me, at 98. So you want this thing to stay above 98. Maybe it'll make a run for a, re a reversion rally up here. You don't know. But like I say, it's possible because things got very negative here. The RSI is still shrugging that 50 number, though. So it looks like the bears are still in control of this thing. If you get above some of these other numbers, you'd be better off. Uh, let's see. Uh, another one that people are running into here is Microsoft. Microsoft. And that's time to break out as well. You see, it came down here. Once the red line starts pointing up, that's your signal that it's going back up. So that's that. Okay, guys, we're getting to the top of the hour, and I'm going to give you my little uh, spiel here. I'm uh, the option professor, and uh, what we do with people is we try to educate them so that they are smarter and have better ways of figuring out what they want to do. Uh, with regards to, we have PDF reports on option trading. And obviously we send those out. We also have a list of stocks by sector. There's like 39, 30 sectors. And we have uh, stocks that we have gleaned out of each sector that we think look the best in the sector. Doesn't mean the sector looks good right now, but if the sector ever did look good, those would be the ones you'd want to focus on. We also, here's the key. We send you a link to our technical indicators. And just like I'm doing right now, we go through different markets that you own, different ideas you have, and if you have options questions, obviously we can talk about the option strategies that go along with some of these ideas. But obviously this, uh, this technical analysis that I work with, I think is very effective. It's based on time, price, and momentum. And I think those are three very big things, plus throw in some Fibonacci number. So again, uh, the way we uh, do it, we don't have a, a monthly rate 
and I uh, take your card and bill it all the time for a newsletter that's losing you money or a chat room that's losing you money or a course that doesn't help you. What we do is we have a hourly rate and then we go over your questions, your information you need. We share our information. We follow the markets that you're in and then we show you the stuff that we're doing. And hopefully at the end of the day, you certainly are gonna be smarter and more knowledgeable when you come out the other end. Now I've been doing this for 40 years. So I've uh, traded millions of dollars worth of stock, thousands and thousands of options contracts. So this is not a new game to me. And again, I do believe in risk management. So I do try to uh, talk to people in terms of, you know, uh, risk management, either hedging or spreading when, it, when you can, or waiting, waiting for the proper time to actually consider a position, patience, risk management, discipline. That's what we like to talk about. You guys never did any of this stuff before. I've been, I've been doing seminars uh, for thousands of people. I know how to explain it very clearly. So uh, if you just started out, you know, I can help you very much, go very slow with you. If you have more experience, obviously there's things that I know that you don't, and obviously that can enhance your own experience. So again, go to the website, option, O-P-T-I-O-N, professor, P-R-O-F-E-S-S-O-R.com, submit your information. I'll call you back. I'll tell you exactly what we can do for you. You can tell me exactly what would be helpful to you, and we'll see if there's a match. If there's a match, we can proceed. But you're not going to be signing up your credit card for every month uh, getting billed or any large amount. It's a ridiculously low amount that we charge for our meeting. And again, after 40 years, my guess is I know something that might be helpful to you. Okay, so that's optionprofessor.com. It's the top of the hour. I'm going to give it back to David Cosmeter. Thank you very much for listening. I hope I went over some things that might be helpful. And of course, I look forward to talking to you after you go to the website and submit your information.